Oh, wrong window over there. Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome to another video in this channel. My name is Abraham Leo and we're in the new studio. So right now we're still uh, working on the decorations and everything. That's why I don't have anything over here. But I was, uh, I made sure to have my setup ready. Hopefully the audio is working fine. So let me know if there's a lot of echo because I did play some uh, soundproofing things, but I need to place a couple more like back here. Uh, but we need to paint this, uh, this, this wall first. And uh, yeah, let me see if I can give you a little bit of a look of the, of the new place. So it's very simple, it's just a, a nice little room here. That's another room over there. And then we have like a, like another wall over here. So very simple, very, very, um, very nice space. But this, this used to be the apartment where my wife and I lived. Uh, we moved uh, literally across the street to a like, small house. So uh, yeah, um, I'm gonna be recording from here. So a couple of big news for you guys. Um, we are gonna be releasing the newest ZBrush course very, very soon. It's finished as I mentioned in the last video. Oh, this is a little bit off. There we go. So that one's gonna be releasing very soon. We just released the Blender one, so make sure to check the description if that's what you want. We had a very nice portfolio review this weekend, only one session, uh, so we're gonna be opening submissions next week, okay? So come back next week if you wanna submit more of your stuff, because uh, for the last weekend of January, we are gonna have our next portfolio submission. Another big announcement, Alejandro is gonna be helping more with uh, the videos here in YouTube. So he's gonna be in charge of the, um, uh, I think it was a Tuesday and Thursday, Video. So I won't be seeing you guys tomorrow on Tuesday, but I will be seeing you back here on Wednesday, Friday, and weekends, of course. So yeah, make sure to leave some uh, some love for Alejandro here in the comments, some some nice little messages for him. Let let him know what's the kind of stuff that you guys want to to learn. As you know, Alejandro is a little bit more experienced with uh, Blender. Uh, he knows about Maya as well, uh, but he's a little bit more experienced with, with Blender. So let's go very quickly about uh, the the treasure chest. And as you saw in the title. This is gonna be a special, um, I'm still like looking over here when I still have the screen over here. So this is gonna be a special, um, what's the word? A special one because I wanna talk about automatic UVs. Automatic UVs uh, has been a topic that's been, been like, you know, thrown around for a, for a while now in the, in the 3D industry. And uh, there are some softwares that do automatic UVs. And um, the big question is, are they good? Like, can you work with automatic UVs? And the answer is yes, however, you need to understand the pros and the cons about using automatic UVs. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna grab this object right here. I'm gonna combine it into a single object, delay history, phrase transformation, center pivot, all of this transform nodes that we have here, we don't need. As you can see, I brought this light scene setup. It's just a basic viewport setup. And I'm gonna call this treasure chest. So let's say you're new to 3D and, and you want to like go straight into and into like um, into like texturing. You want to add like wood grain and stuff. Something that a lot of people would do is just grab their object, go into UV and say automatic UVs. And these will give you UVs. As you can see right here, we have UVs. Now, what's the problem? Well, as you can see, the amount of islands that we get, the amount of like fragments that we get is really, really big. Now, can we work with this? Yes, this is perfectly workable. It will be not as, um, what's the word, as ideal. There will be a lot of seams, but we can get around that. However, I wanna test with this little asset here, uh, a new feature, well, it's not new, but it's been around for, for a couple of, uh, I think for like a year or something now, uh, which is automatic UVs inside of uh, Substance Painter, okay? So first let's set the project real quick. Let's go back to 2021 where we have next to live. There we go, set. And we're gonna export this into assets. That's great. Now look at all the things that we've done so far. Pretty cool, right? I, sh I should be doing like a portfolio. I, I think there's a couple of objects that are portfolio worthy, like the obelisk, remember that one? I really like that one. There we go. So let's jump into Substance Painter. Substance Painter introduced a new automatic UV tool um, a long time ago, before it was bought by, by Substance actually. But I remember when it first came out, uh, some of my artists here in the, in the studio, they were like, hey, are we gonna be using that? Should we do like keep doing traditional UVs? The answer is, if you have the time to do traditional UVs, traditional UVs are still the best. However, there is some, some uh, like cool things about this. So I'm gonna change this to 2848. And I'm gonna click this icon right here, which says auto unwrap. Okay, we're gonna go here. We're gonna, of course, look for our um, our element. So let's go into next to live, assets, and let's say uh, treasure, treasure load, there we go. 
Now, there's a couple of options that we can do. Seams, generate only missing data. UV islands, generate only missing data. This is this is in case we don't have anything. So technically, technically, you could do your cuts and then let Substance Painter do the rest of the things. You could have some islands and then let uh, Substance Painter do some of the things. However, like usually you're, you want to have like everything done by it, right? So margin size, I'm going to say small. That's the default. That's how, how much space they're going to leave in between like the margin. And the UV island, I'm going to try to, um, I'm going to leave it on constraint. I'm going to let it do like everything by default. This one's important. We definitely want to avoid elongated UV islands. So imagine we were doing like a, I don't know, like a light, light push or something. It would be like a really, really long island. And then the space that you would get for all of the other islands would be really short. So usually you cut that thing into several segments so that it packs nice, nicer and, and you get a nicer uh, packing and therefore a nicer UV or texture. Okay. So let's see how it does. I'm just gonna hit okay. And uh, technically, if I go here, um, I think that's the same UV that we had though. I think that's a better UV, is it, is it the same one or is it a, is it a better one? It seems very similar. It's the same one, okay. So let's, let's do something here. <laughs> let's grab the object, right click. I'm gonna uh, assign a new material, Lambert, just a Lambert, whatever, Lambert 2. And we're gonna say UV, delete UVs, because since we have data, it's not ignoring everything. So let's export again. There we go. First little mistake there, so let's do it again. So new, let's select the treasure low, okay. Uh, auto unwrap, and hit okay. This project has been modified, discard. Now, technically, there you go, that's the unwrapping. And uh, okay, so this is what we got. So as you can see, this definitely looks a little bit better than what we had on the, What's the word on the other on the other object, right? Like on the automatic mapping from Maya. However, the the big question is, can we work with this? Like, is this a workable UV? And here's where where we're gonna have to do some tests. So let's say we use this wood walnut uh, material, for instance. The first thing I notice is, <laughs> oh my god, sorry. The first thing I notice is that the seams, of course, are not going in the in the exact way that we want, right? So, is that a problem? Well. It could be a problem. So let's add a black mask here real quick. Let's mask out by geometry because all of this is a geometry. Wait, that's not supposed to be a geometry. It's supposed to be. Huh, that's weird. Okay, let's try doing UV. That's weird because that's not, oh, there you go. There you go. I was, no, it seems like, that's really weird. See how, it thinks that this, like both of these things are the same geometry when when they're not. Okay, anyway, we can ignore that and just mask that out later. So now if I go back to the properties of the of the object and I change the, the material projection to triplanar projection, we might be able, as you can see, to get away with having like wrong UVs by mapping it out this way. And as you can see now, the wood is looking like not bad. It's, it's actually like pretty decent. So even though we're not getting the best possible UVs that we could for our project, it's still doable. And uh, I do recommend this method when you don't have a lot of time to work on an asset. The best uh, process, of course, is do proper UVs to get the best possible optimization and resolution. But as you can see, this is pretty, pretty tight. Now, I am a little bit worried about the fact that it thinks that this object right here and this object right here are the same. When they're not, as you can see right here, they're, they're not the same. So let's do another thing here. Let's let's go back to original materials. There we go. And let's export like this. I'm going to say file, export selection. Let's export again. My mouse is doing this weird like screeching noise. I'm not sure why. I think I rubbed the surface <laughs> way too much or something. Or like I don't have the pads anymore. I'm going to have to see how to fix that. Um, and let's go here. Let's create a new file again. Um, let's reselect this guy. And again, I'll out our wrap and hit OK, discard. So now technically, wait, it did the same thing, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay, again, UV, the lead UVs, there we go. Now we export again. There we go. And let's go here, file, new. Let's reselect this guy. The reason why I'm doing a new one is because we need to recalculate this one and discard. So now technically, there we go. That's the auto mapping for the gold and for the wood, which will give me, as you can see, a little bit more islands. This is our, these are two maps of, uh, of, of textures. And now if I go to the wood, for instance, and I did do this again, 
you can see that by actually that UV projection is pretty nice except for this one. So I'm definitely going to change this to triplanar projection. Now this only works for this object because all of the woods are like triplanar Align right like we have front woods side woods and then top woods so as you can see we can de get this to work very very nicely but it won't work in the same way for for everything okay so since we're already here let's see how far we can push the texture so let's go for like a metal so I'm gonna go for like a gold and let's start with a gold here as you can see the gold since it doesn't have any like texture to it it won't look bad um, but I'm definitely gonna increase the roughness just a little bit. We can add a filter. Remember, we have here filters, and there's some metal filters that work very nicely. So, for instance, in this one, I think I want to go for like this matte finish rough. And as you can see, this is going to give us. Now, here's where we're going to start having some of the of the problems because you're going to see that the like the pattern doesn't really align with everything. Like we have seams and stuff. We just need to check again here and change this from UV projection to tray planner projection. And that should alleviate some of it. If it doesn't, then it's on the on this thing right here. And we have this triplanar mapping. We just turn it on. And that should, again, alleviate a little bit of the things. Let's modify the scale. No, it's not really working. So I'm going to do it uh, other ways, in other way. One thing we can do here is I can grab like a uh, rough. There's an iron rough, which is really, really good. Of this, uh, this like steel rough. So I'm going to grab the steel rough. There we go. What was the color of the chest? It was gold, right? Yeah. So I'm going to grab the steel rough. And then down here, I'm just going to change the color to like a like a golden color. Oh, on this one. So if you change this from steel to like certain sort of like gold, we can get a very similar effect without much of a problem. There we go. Uh, we need to set this, of course, to triplanar mapping, as we've mentioned before. That will get rid of all of the seams and all this stuff. And again, this really can only work on this sort of assets because we're working with an asset that's very like boxy, right? If we were using this for like like a more abstract or wild shape, then it wouldn't be as easy to, to generate this sort of stuff, okay? Now, let me look for Rust Gold. That's a very nice, uh, it's called Electro Swing Mix. Very nice uh, playlist that I can recommend, guys. Uh, so there we go. So as you can see, the rust on the gold is dark brown. It's not like, uh, um, yeah, it's dark brown. So let's go back here to um, to a traditional rust. There we go. And again, just black mask, generator, dirt generator. There we go. Oh, of course, we forgot to do the, the bakes. So bake mesh maps. Uh, let's do 2K bakes for all of them. So bake selected textures. Of course, they're gonna like be really bad, but the ambient illusion should be like good enough. The cavity and the like you can see the stretching on the elements, but again, it should be good enough. It might not be perfect, not might be as optimized, but it should give us a, a nice result. There we go. Uh, this one definitely I like to use a multiply to to like get a nicer effect. I am gonna increase. I want this chest to be a little bit older, so I am gonna increase the the intensity of the generator. But then I'm going to decrease the grunge amount so that we only get it on the, on the cavities and not as much on the flat areas. And of course, we're going to use the trick that I've been mentioning all the time. Every single time we do a portfolio review, I, I mentioned this trick. You are going to add a fill layer. You're going to add any sort of like noise, like this black and white noise. Um, increase the scale a little bit if you want. Increase the balance so you get like those sharp lines. Change this to triplanar mapping as well, triplanar projection, so you get this. And then you multiply this again your dirt layer so that way you are going to get rust but it's not going to be everywhere it's going to look a little bit more artistic right it's going to look like like you actually wanted to place this only on specific areas and then you can modify this like the more you add it or the more you remove it you can modify how much rust you actually want on your on your scene which as you can see here looks quite nice i'm going to go back to the wood now uh i like the walnut i think it's a little bit too saturated so i'm going to this saturated a little bit, and I definitely think it's a little bit too, um, what's the word? It's a little bit too new, so I'm gonna increase the roughness a little bit more. And I would like to have a little bit more like damage on the wood, like more grain. Uh, and we have this wood rough that I really like, but I don't like the, the colors of the wood rough. So what I can do is I can, for instance, like multiply this or, or uh, like linear dodge or something, and then we can play around with this thing 
and that way we can bring some of the color without like losing all of the other one. I actually like really like this one. Another thing we can do is we can just turn on normal map. And let's see, there we go. See how the normal map is adding like effect to the whole thing. So we can just use the normal map of this wood rough on top of the of the other one. So this is our original one and this is the wood uh, rough. We're definitely gonna change this to train planet projection as well. There we go. And that way we're gonna have a little bit more like wood grain. So that one that one's definitely gonna help. We can grab the rust that way, uh, again. I know wood does not rust, but uh, you will get some sort of like dirt and I really like using uh, rust. Black mask, right click. We're gonna add another uh, generator. And of course, in this case, we're gonna use the um, dirt generator. This one, this definitely, definitely has to be in overlay so that we darken the, the corners and there we go. So now it makes sense that the rust of the of the metal is kind of like like uh, bleeding into the, into the wood, right? Um, this one, we're gonna do the same trick. So I'm gonna add a fill layer and we're gonna use a like black and white spots again and multiply this against the element here. Probably increase the contrast a little bit, change this to trade planner projection as well. And there we go. So now this black and white spots helps me reduce the amount of, of dirt that we're getting pretty much everywhere. And there we go. I mean, this is looking quite nice. Let's go back to the gold and uh, we're gonna probably increase the roughness of the, of the metal just a little bit more. Nice. Now, uh, usually uh, chests and, and objects that are on the, like on the, on the, like exposed to the elements will get more damage on the lower side, like mud and stuff like that. So I wanna, I'm gonna add like a mud layer. Um, I think this, in this one we have the, I have this dirty sand that I downloaded. Um, I'm gonna use this one because it looks really cool, but you guys are, are free to use any, any material that you want. So this one's gonna be probably on top of the rust. There we go. This one definitely needs to change the tray planner projection as, as well. As you can see, we're going to be using tray planner projection quite a bit on the on the elements. And I'm going to right click, add the generator, and we're going to add a. In this case, we're going to do the. I think we're going to do the three D. No, there, actually, there's a there's a nice um, smart mask over here, on the smart mask options called uh, ground dirt, that I really like this one, dirt ground. So we're gonna grab this one and get it there. And then on the mask, we can change how much, how much like ground dirt there is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it quite a bit there. There we go. So we get this sort of like sand effect going everywhere. Now, one thing we can do is I can actually right click this layer and I can instance this, uh, where is it? Instantiate across texture sets. And I can, I can pretty much copy the effect onto the wood. So now whatever I do on this one will also affect the wood because they're, they're kind of like copying the effects from one point to another. Very, very handy, very, very handy uh, effect. Let's reduce the grunge, not as much. And just play around with this one right here. I'm gonna reduce the contrast a little bit. Here's the top down gradient. So we can decide how, how, how far high it goes. So I'm just gonna really keep it like down here. There we go, that looks a lot nicer, right? Nice, I like that. Now the wood, for instance, I, I would expect the, the top sides of the wood to get a little bit of scratches and stuff. So I am gonna add another layer here, just a colored layer, probably roughness. I'm gonna keep the roughness quite high and I'm gonna grab like the same color that we had on the wood just like a little bit saturated, probably a little bit more like yellowish. There we go. I'm gonna add a black mask and I'm gonna add like um, a fill layer. And this one's called scratches. This one, there we go. And we can change the, the balance of the scratches and we can change the contrast and we can also change the scale. So if we want like a couple more scratches, we can add a couple more scratches right there. Now here's where I would add um, a specific artistic layers to my, to my texture, right click and I would add like a paint layer and then just like remove some of the scratches, right? Like I, I'm just, I, I just wanna have like scratches on the, on the top section or at least more scratches on the top section. And, uh, and yeah, there we go. So with this paint layer, we can just paint out some of the scratches. Not gonna be easy to paint them back in, um, but it, it is easy to paint them out as you can see right here. 
I do think the sand looks a little bit too much. So one thing I can do is I can just reduce the opacity a little bit. There we go. So it's just not as like in your face. And um, I think I would like to add a little bit more, more texture to the to the to the metal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for, I have this material, this one, this old book material, which I really, really like because it's going to give me like this sort of rusty, flaky effect. Look at this. So I'm also going to use, of course, straight panel projection. See how it gives this very nice texture pretty much everywhere. And then if we place this into like an overlay mode and we remove the color, look how nice everything looks. Actually not the color, the metal. If we remove the metal, we get this very nice flaky effect on, on everything. I used this technique on a, on a project uh, last year and it, and it worked quite nicely. We can even remove the color here and now see how, how cool the, the gold looks. We can of course change the scale and the more scale we give it, the more like flakiness to the whole gold. So the more texture. And now of course, everything is being uh, added by the normal map, I think. So we can reduce the normal map. Uh, I said the normal map, no, it's, I think it's the height map. Yeah, so now we can reduce the high map slightly so that it's not like, again, like in your face. And there we go. Here's where we're gonna start noticing some errors or problems. As you can see, the the even though we are using trade planner projection, the effect there on the texture, like certain areas are not as optimized as others. So it will look like cool on one area, so like on a couple of areas, but it won't look as cool on, on every uh, like every, every other place. So it's important that we that we understand that even though this, this uh, technique that we're using, this, um, what's the word? Um, this automatic UV thing, it will be nice, it will be useful, but it won't be as as, as efficient, right? Uh, I definitely want to add like the black lines on the on the woods. I think we're definitely missing those. So I'm gonna go into the woods. I'm gonna add just like a black color, just like dark. Right click, add black mask, and I'm gonna add a fill layer. And I'm pretty sure if I look for the ambient occlusion map, there we go. We're gonna get that. Now I'm gonna right click this one, add a levels, invert those levels, and I can play around with the lines, see that? So I can get some like really strong like black lines. And of course, um, let's go back to base color. We can change this to like an overlay and just like play around with how much intensity we want. But that's gonna give a very, very nice effect to the whole thing. Um, what else can we add? I, I think we're missing a little bit of change in hues on the gold, like the gold looks very uniform, even though we do have the rust. So let's go back to the gold. And one thing that we can do is again, for instance, I have this iron rust. So let's try, let's try to see how this one looks. Maybe it will look better than the book. Yeah, I think it looks a little bit better than the book. So I'm going to delete the book. And then this one, of course, we're going to change to triplanar projection. Uh, this let's modify the scale a little bit. There we go. And we are gonna use um, linear dodge. Nope. Multiply. Multiply. Multiply looks good. There we go. Now see that? That's the height map. Uh, we can just remove it and, and we'll get like a very nice effect on the gold. But I'm just gonna keep it and I'm gonna go again into the height channel and reduce the amount of, of height information that we have. Just keep it really, really soft. It's, just, it's, it's almost nothing. Like probably like like 5%. There we go. Now I'm gonna compare, like if it changes quite a bit, I'm also gonna compare, okay, yeah, so as you can see, the normal map is also contributing. So let's bring the normal map to like 50%. And that way we are gonna get the detail. As you can see, that looks way, way nicer, uh, but without uh, destroying most of the thing. I think I got this iron rust from the substance source. And again, this is one of those things where if you pay a little bit more, you are gonna get access to a couple of, a couple of other stuff that are gonna make the your life a little bit easier. Uh, but yeah, this is this is pretty much it, guys. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think about the the result. Let's do a quick render here with iRay. Let's go to to our nice Corsica bitch, which I always like. Let's get some nice shadow here. Let's go to the to the ground position. There we go. That's quite close. And yeah, I mean, this is what we would see. I'm gonna do a, a little bit of color balance here because I think I think we're we're missing some like detail. So I'm gonna go all the way down here to to post effects. Where is it? There are some here post effects. I'm gonna do some color correction, and I'm gonna bring the white temperature, the white balance temperature, a little bit like warmer. 
so that we see it a little bit nicer. Let's increase the contrast just a tad bit and lower the saturation. There we go. So there's a little bit of post-processing. I think the saturated, the contrast is way too much. So let's bring it back to one, probably like 1.1. No, oh wow, that's too much, 1.01. That's not that bad. This is where it gets a little bit tricky because it might look good on this screen and then doesn't look as good up there or there. So um, I'm just trying to, to make it work as, as nice as possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can do as many things as you want here on, on the post-production side of things and, and you're gonna get like a lot of different results. But as you can see, automatic UVs are good, but they do have their limitations. You might face a couple of areas where they don't look as good. If you need them to get fast or to get to, to finish something quickly because a project deadline is coming up, just, just know that the tool exists, it is useful, but it will never be, I don't think it will ever be as good as doing your own UVs and making sure they're perfect and super well optimized. So that's it for today, guys. This is the end of this mini project. So hopefully you guys like the whole uh, process. Uh, we're gonna see Alejandro tomorrow, as I mentioned, and I'll see you back on Wednesday. So let me know in the comments what else you guys wanna uh, cover. I wanna cover Xgen. So if you are looking forward to learning a little bit about Xgen for hair, uh, I wanna do a little exercise with you guys. So hopefully you guys are, are okay with that. And uh, yeah, let's keep on rolling with this new year. Let's keep on rolling with new projects, more 3D, and I'll see you back on the next one. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, comment. All of those really help the channel and uh, it really helps us. So thank you guys. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.